It's the Cozy Rainbow Podcast Time. Everybody, welcome to the Cozy Rainbow Podcast. My name is Tammy, but my students know me as Miss Tammy. My name is Joe, and I have the heat tolerance of a snowman. And on today's episode, we're going to be talking all about hot chips, um, Takis, Cheetos, and the spicy truth behind these chips. I'm terrified. Yes. Right after these trivia questions. So here we go, Joe. Let's, I'm also terrified of those. Let's see how much you know about hot Cheetos and Takis. Number one, which one of these is not responsible for why hot chips are so delicious? A. Uh, <laughs> The delicious. Level, yeah, this is why there's delicious. One of these is false. Oh, boy. A, the levels of salt, sugar, and fat are scientifically engineered for humans to enjoy. B, the crunchy texture and sound. C, monosodium glutamate. Or D, a perfect rating on the Scoville scale. What on earth do you mean a perfect rating on the Scoville scale? One of them is false. I, all right, you know what? Given this silly little smirk she's shooting me, that's D. Okay. Number two. What is the hottest pepper ever? Is it A? Uh, pepper X? No. Is it oh, A? Oh, then the Carolina Reaper. <laughs> Dang it. The pe- Pepper X is a newer one bred from Carolina Reapers. It's actually spicier. Pepper X is newer? Yes. Oh, my God. I was just like seconds before you got here, I was looking. And the Carolina Reaper is the hottest pepper since 2013. I'm I'm pretty sure it's been dethroned by one Pepper X. Uh, I don't know. I mean, okay. So those are the top two contenders. Well, dang it. That just ruined it for everybody. But the other options were the Carolina Reaper, the Cayenne Pepper, the Komodo Dragon, or the Ghost Pepper. The Komodo... Oh, everyone's favorite number three, Ghost Pepper. Uh Uh-huh. Still famous. Yeah. I could have tricked some people, but you ruined it. All right. You tricked yourself. You didn't know about Pepper X. I'm still pretty sure it's the Carolina Reaper. Pepper X? I was just looking it up. (laughs) Spice, spice, and everything spice. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> number and three the professor spilled pepper x true or false a janitor who worked for the frito-lay at the company at the time was promoted due to his invention of hot cheetos true or false i promoted to what <laughs> he invented them he invented hot cheetos uh hmm hmm you know what? that's a nice story i'll say true okay great um let's get into it right after this quick break so we're gonna get right into it the spicy saga of hot chips and lies the truth about talkies and cheetos truth huh yeah there's lies involved so we're gonna start off with the janitor who invented hot cheetos Richard Montañez is credited with inventing hot Cheetos in the year 1948. Despite facing numerous challenges and growing up in difficult circumstances, Montañez never let go of his dreams. His journey took an unexpected turn when he found employment as a janitor at the Frito-Lay Company in California. He details the story in his autobiography, Flame and Hot, the incredible true story of one man's rise from janitor to top executive. Jeez. <laughs> In the bustling corridors of Frito Lay, Montañez's imagination sparked a revolutionary idea the concept of a spicy snack that would soon take the world by storm. This unlikely inventor poured his heart and soul into developing this fiery creation, drawing inspiration from his Mexican heritage and experiences. The movie Flamin' Hot Cheeto, oh, sorry, it's just Flamin' Hot. The movie Flamin' Hot in 2023, that's the year it came out, is based on the story of how hot Cheetos were invented. Oh my gosh. What are your thoughts so far? What do you think of Mr. Montañez? Such drama, such... They made a movie about this. They have a book. Yeah, titled, what a great story, right? I, were were flaming hot Cheetos the first hot chip? Mm, I don't. 
I really doubt it. I don't know the answer to that, but the, mm. the first hot chip to like go viral, maybe the the hot chip that sold the most hot chips in the world, maybe that would be hot Cheetos, but I don't know about the first. Mm. Okay. Anyway, we were talking about that janitor. So you said you believe that, right, Joe? Uh, yeah, sure. That's a nice little story. Yeah, it's a nice not? story. Yeah. However, however, in 2021, the Los Angeles Times did a deep dive on the invention of hot Cheetos. The article is called, <laughs> this is hard to read, the, the Man Who Didn't Invent Flamin' Hot Cheetos. And it gave a quote from Frito-Lay Corporate. The company stated, while they still celebrate Mr. Montanez's contributions, he was not involved in the making of Hot Cheetos. In reality, Hot Cheetos were invented in Plano, Texas. Congrats, Plano. I, so what, he just lied? And people believe him. I think that I, I was curious to did, ask you did that. Did Frito Lay lie? I don't think so. I uh, I, I believe the company. What? Is this another okay. he said, she said? But oh, actually, boy. you might have a point. I automatically assume the company, but I mean, it just seems unlikely to me that the janitor invented it. I feel like he just came up with a story and he marketed it really well and it was great. But I mean, if I knew more about hot chips and I knew like the hotness involved in it the the chemistry of making it perhaps like right. if it's like you just go to the store and you grab a couple of spices off the shelves and you throw them together and it's like bam you got hot cheeto powder as opposed to you you order your chemicals online <laughs> and your red 40 uh titrate out a red cheeto powder i don't know yeah i don't know it seems i mean i'm sure it's obviously hot cheetos were developed by a group of food scientists so as a janitor i mean i don't know it could have just been a home recipe and then they probably innovated onto it added some preservatives some red dye who's to say so yeah it is uh he's not i yeah not not us um it depends on who you ask Okay, now we're going to talk about the creation of Takis. So I tried to find the inventor of Takis, but there's not really a specific person who is credited with the invention of Takis, but rather an entire company. So the Takis were developed and released by a company called Barcel in Mexico in 1999. They came to America in 2006. Since then, Takis have grown to be one of America's favorite snacks. Now, me personally, I don't actually like Takis, but I America's see... favorite snack, circa um, Gen Z. Circa Gen Z. Gen, Gen Alpha. Uh, Gen Alpha, whatever. I'm just Gen Z and Gen they, Alpha. No, there's... it's Takis taken a whole two generations by storm. Uh, I, I guess. Does anybody over the age of like 25 eat Takis? They've got to, but like, I mean, I've only ever seen kids eat them. Well, yeah, because when you get older, you got to worry about your health. Well, also, when you get older, your taste buds are um, more worn out, I guess, or something. I forget. Okay, that's I. That's not research I did for this article. Okay, hmm. but what I did research was why hot chips are addictive, but so good. The addictive and delicious appeal of hot Cheetos and Takis can be attributed to a combination of factors rooted in food science. First, both snacks capitalize on the bliss point concept, a term used to describe the precise level of sugar, salt, and fat that maximizes palatability and triggers pleasure centers in the brain. There's sugar in my chips? Of course there is. (laughs) Hot Cheetos' fiery flavor and Takis' intense spiciness, along with the perfect balance of seasonings, contribute to hitting this bliss point, making them irresistible to consumers. To and children. I, to Yeah, to mostly kids. And to answer your question, I mean, technically, isn't bread a sugar? Like, oh, okay, not bread, sorry. Sorry, carbs are sugars, carbohydrates, and chips have carbs, so sugar, right? Sure, when you phrase it like that, 
Right. I mean, that's one way to say it. And then also, like, if you were to look at the nutrition facts, it's definitely not going to say zero grams of sugar. Yeah. Actually, it might. But it can say zero and be, like, half a gram or something like that. So, But I'm sure there's more. Mm. Uh, when you mix those things together, like when you mix the sugar with the salt and the fat, it doesn't necessarily always taste sweet if there's more salt and fat. Hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Furthermore, the combination of artificial flavors and umami-rich additives such as monosodium glutamate, which is MSG, our beloved friend, in hot Cheetos and Takis heightens their savory taste. These flavor-enhancing components work synergistically to create a pleasurable eating experience that keeps consumers coming back for more, contributing to the addictive nature of these snacks. Right. You didn't say it explicitly, but for the sake of people who may not have listened to the ramen episode, mm. what is umami? Well, okay. Umami, it's like a type of flavor. So you can get it from seaweed has like an umami flavor. Some people say it tastes like meat. It's like a meat-like Umami, like soy sauce also has an umami flavor. So MSG is one of those ingredients. I'm pretty sure it was invented. They found it in seaweed. That's how that's how MSG came to be. Okay. Hmm. Are hot Cheetos healthy? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't hmm. know. Well, um, listener, moderation is key when it comes to consuming spicy hot chips for the sake of your health. While the occasional indulgence can add a flavorful kick to your diet, excessive consumption may lead to digestive discomfort. So what happens if you eat too many hot Cheetos? Digestive discomfort. Hot Cheetos come with a warning label for a reason. They can be seriously addictive. I mean, not seriously. I mean, I don't know, but... Not like hot cheetos detox addictive no i i'm pretty sure actually that's like their slogan is dangerously addictive right isn't that what chester always says they're dangerous no he says they're dangerously good they say dangerously cheesy dangerously cheesy okay so it's just me that's calling them addictive right um so yeah your hot cheetos when paired with a balanced diet Enjoying spicy chips in moderation can be a tasty and satisfying addition to your snacking repertoire. And now we're going to talk about Scoville units and how these hot chips match up on the Scoville scale. The Scoville scale measures the spiciness or heat of chili peppers and other spicy foods However, it's important to note that the Scoville scale is not typically used for snacks like Takis and Hot Cheetos, as it primarily applies to the heat of chili peppers and hot sauces. Snack foods are not officially rated on the Scoville scale. The Carolina Reaper pepper is the hottest pepper ever, and it ranks... No, it isn't. Okay, do you know how, <laughs> do you know how hot Pepper X is? Uh... That would be uh, on the Scoville, uh, in Scoville heat units, 2,693,000. Oh my God, he was right. The Carolina Reaper pepper is the second hottest pepper ever. At 1 million. Ranking at 1.5 to 2 million Scoville units. Right, okay. <laughs> um, hot chips would likely be around 50,000 Scoville units. Compared to the hottest peppers, spicy chips are like a walk in the park. You know why you know why you can't measure the uh Scoville thing of hot chips? The Scoville thing, the Scoville unit. Yeah, yeah. you know why you can't Scoville hot chips? Why? See the method is uh by dilution. You see, they take like a drop of pepper juice or hot sauce as it were. Mm-hmm. And they keep like diluting it in water and they have people drink it and you know say whether or not they can uh still taste the spice huh so that's a that's a humane more humane way to test it hum- what 
Like you think- if you only have a drip and you put it in water. I did. I watched an episode of television. I don't remember what the show was called that inspired this episode. And I did watch how they calculate the Scoville units. And when I watched it, it was a machine. Uh, I guess, Well, yeah, I guess that could that could also be like how you do it. But your like, story. If you have a number of. Like, if you have a number of little particles of capsaicin, the thing that makes things spicy, uh. and if you can, like, count those per, like, unit volume, uh. Joe, then you can... Joe, chemistry perspective as usual. Then you could kind of... I could see how you could, like, extract a, a Scoville approximation from that, <laughs> but... <laughs> but, like, Scoville proper is, like, an imprecise measurement because it's, like, the capsaicin in it taken out by alcohol and then dissolved in sugar water and then people taste it and like how diluted you can get they dissolve it in sh- not even just regular water but sugar water sugar water so it's Cause like fun. like water <laughs> it's a sweet and spicy experience uh sure yeah if they added some fat to the water then it could reach the bliss point i do they do they put fat in like Gatorade and no sodas and soft drinks i mean like coconut milk has fat in it would you call coconut but, would you call coconut milk blissful the bliss point no coconut milk that's the point is like okay the point of the bliss point is that the those things this combination of salt sugar and fat it's not really found in nature it has to be like a human intervention oh I see. And that's what makes it like unnatural and really good. So coconut milk, you can find it out in nature. However, if you mix the coconut milk with salt and sugar, like if you were to make it into a curry. Oh, a they don't. Curry, yeah, coconuts don't have salt, do they? Well, I mean, not like. They not, have salt, but like I said, it's the bliss point. It has to be a specific, like tested, engineered out on people. I mean, well, you can like breed coconuts to reach the bliss point. It's true, is that, and that's what. That's, so would you call that? Would you call that nature? No, and you, therefore disqualified. I really from, don't think you could. I I actually don't think you could breed, and uh, <laughs> I don't think you could breed coconuts to reach the bliss point because it would be weird. I think it would just be impossible. It's not meant to be like that. If science was you restricted could, by whether or not something was weird, <laughs> I we just would, think it would be impossible. I don't know. I don't know that much about the bliss point. Okay, I just. I don't know about like what makes something like, is it officially like, is it different for different people? The bliss point? Maybe that's a whole different episode. Hmm. Right? Because what you find to be delicious might be different than somebody else. Somebody else's bliss point. What brings you bliss? You know, with that being said, we're going to move on Yeah. to the unique and discontinued flavors of Takis and Hot Cheetos. Because over the years, Takis and Cheetos have tantalized snack enthusiasts with a variety of unique and discontinued flavors, offering diverse taste experiences that have left a lasting impression. Here are some noteworthy examples of unique Taki flavors. There's Taki Nitro, which is infused with habanero. (laughs) What? Sorry, Nitro is just a funny word to (laughs) apply to (laughs) to To chips. chips. Why? That's car stuff. Oh. <laughs> Makes me think of like drinking motor oil or something. I mean, I think we're going to, yeah, that's like the theme here is like extreme, like, whoa, like tough nitro. Okay. Habanero and lime. That's the nitro. They, this was in 2016. Takis Lava came about in the year 2010. Uh, before they were discontinued, they were a blend of chili pepper and citrus. And mm. number three, Takis Wild. Taking inspiration from untamed flavors, Takis Wild unleashed a ferocious medley of spices, including cumin and jalapeno, in the year 2012. I think it'd be interesting to try, I guess, but like I um, said. Huh? Well, I have the heat tolerance of... Of a snowman? Yes. So Of Jack Frost. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sit that one out. Right. Okay. And then that discontinued hot Cheetos. So write in, you know, if you were a fan of these leave a comment or whatever um hot cheetos asteroid balls these unique sphere shaped snacks offered a different texture and crunch in 2003 so they just changed the shape uh 
Hot Cheetos Extra Flamin'. Building upon the classic Flamin' Hot Cheetos, this discontinued variety intensified the heat to shocking levels. And it was released in the year 2013. I am mortified. Why? You... <laughs> What Warheads is to say, or like Warheads, like, I don't know. Warheads is the thing I can think of, but like, I'm sure there's other it is. stuff. Yeah, Warheads is to sour what that presumably is to heat, and that's scary. Yeah. I don't know. Just Dis- discontinued from being too spicy. I'm scared of those chips. Wah. <laughs> Want me to call your mommy? <laughs> I want you to call the milkman oh right okay because you can drink milk milk uh something in milk i forget what uh deactivates capsaicin those are those are not the right words to use to describe that but that's is it like do you think it's the incredibly broad strokes gist of it yeah well you can see it you can try it out yourself try it out yourself by drinking some milk after you eat too many hot chips it might be placebo who knows it's not it's definitely real. And I, I heard that water makes it spicier. That I could believe is placebo. Uh, they say that because um, capsaicin's hydrophobic, like oil. Water just runs right off of it. Just a plethora of information you are, Joe. <laughs> okay, the last, the last type of discontinued Hot Cheetos uh, that I have here is Hot Cheetos Puffs Flamin' Hot. A melt-in-your-mouth experience with an intense heat, catering to fans who sought a different sensation with the same flavor. It was initially launched in the year 2005. Those are my favorite kinds, the ones that melt in your mouth. It's a little strange that they discontinued the Puffs Hot Cheetos. I mean, like... Right? Bring them back. Like, Cheetos Puffs are still everywhere. Anywhere you can get Cheetos, I, you'll almost yeah, certainly are, be able yeah. to get Puffs. And wherever you can get Cheetos... You'll absolutely be able to get hot Cheetos. But so, so why no, no why intersection? No hot Cheeto puffs since two thousand five. What's the deal? Are are all the people who like Cheetos puffs and is there no overlap here? Do snowmen like Cheetos puffs? Do you like Cheetos puffs? Sure. Sure. Okay. Let's They're go. All right. They're let's, pretty good. Let, let's go back to those trivia questions. Which I think you got them right pretty much the first time. Um, but number one, which one of these is not responsible for why hot chips are so delicious? Do you remember what the options uh, were? No, I don't. Oh, okay. Uh, but it's it, the, the, the three bliss. The salt, bliss. Yeah, the bliss factor. That was one of them. Fat. Yeah. The MSG. Yes. Uh, um, this one is a sensory experience. Oh, it it's crunchy or the, something. The crunch and the sound of the crunch. It's a it's the sound. Yeah, the hmm. cr- the crunch, the feeling of the crunch, and the sound of the crunch. You know, that's that's not something I thought would be something on food science's mind, but at the same time, of course it, it is. makes total sense that of it would be. Of course it is on food science's so the, mind. When you any scientist that makes observations is using the five sentences sentences the five senses. So, of course, they're going to. Well, sure, but when when you think food, think you think how the taste, food feels, you know, and how the food sounds. You know, it's just, texture in general is just an underappreciated facet of food by people who don't care much about food, like me. Yeah, I was gonna say, are you talking about yourself? <laughs> okay, um, what is the hottest pepper ever? Pepper X. Unfortunately, I was wrong, and I have to edit my notes. <laughs> <laughs> number three true or false the janitor who worked for frito-lay company at the time was promoted due to his invention of hot cheetos as according to frito-lay false yes but if you watch the movie or you read the guy's autobiography they say true but i don't know i guess up oh, to well, you to I decide mean, listener what do you think did he really do it and I well, I guess to be fair, the Los Angeles Times is on the side of Frito Lay. So, what? Well, it's, you said it was. Um, you said that the Los Angeles Times did the investigation. Oh yes. And Frito Lay. So. Yeah, yeah. No, but the way you said it, I was thinking that you were suggesting that the Los Angeles Times article might be biased, uh, as when, if Frito Lay paid them to write it. 
which could be true. And you always have to consider that because I only used one source when I was writing these notes. Oh, boy. But what do you think, listener? You can write in, send us an email, or you can comment, I think, on Spotify or if you're on YouTube. Um, you can we email. We can't comment on YouTube, unfortunately. But Oh, that's true. Well, if you're over 13 and you're not on YouTube, kids. No, then... they no, they turn off comments for everyone. Oh. YouTube kid, If your video ends up on YouTube, kids, comments are off. Period. Okay, well, there you go. So I guess don't comment because you can't. On, on YouTube. On YouTube. On you, but Spotify people. Spotify, you can. Please. Yeah, you can send it. Or you, or you can send us an email at, at cozyrainbownv at gmail.com. We would adore to hear from you just in general, really. Yeah. Oh, there's also a contact us form on the website. Some people have used that. That was Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, you can also check out our Teachers Pay Teachers stores if, if you would like to use this podcast in your classroom um, or take notes on it, use it to teach how to take notes. You can visit our Teachers Pay Teachers store. All of this is linked at our website, CozyRainbow.org. There's free resources for using podcasts in the classroom at CozyRainbow.org. All right, everybody. Thanks, Thanks for, for listening. listening.